Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out this evening. Um, if you could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And welcome to everyone who's here today. Nice to see a whole bunch of faces out there. So welcome. Uh, we'll start with the minutes approval. May I have a motion to uh, approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Next are the financial reports, the treasurer's reports. Uh, does anyone have, um, do you have a motion to approve, please? So moved. Okay, uh, any uh, questions? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm like out of it tonight. I'm very sorry. A second, please. Second, yeah. second, thank you. And any questions? Anyone have any questions? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, Mrs. Iconist, I'll turn it over to you for a moment. Since I was not present at the last Board of Ed meeting, I'd like to take a few minutes to comment on a very important person who will be retiring from the Massapequa Public Schools on August 31st, our own Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Alan Adcock. Most of Mr. Adcock's life has been spent here in Massapequa. Back in the 1960s, he entered Uncle School as a kindergartner, then moved on to McKenna Junior High School and Alfred G. Burner High School, graduating in 1979. I've been told that Alan was the kid that always looked forward to September and the start of the new school year. Right, Alan? Yep. Have your new lunchbox, your new backpack, you're ready to go. Mr. Allen joined the district's administrative team in July of 1999. He served as business administrator and assistant superintendent for business before be being promoted to deputy superintendent 11 years ago. His knowledge and understanding of complicated state aid formulas, bond intricacies, reserve funds, pension funds, etc., 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 is nothing short of genius. Allen is credited with not only steadying the district's finances during a difficult period, but also bringing us to strong financial stability. It has been a pleasure working alongside him for the past 22 years. Everything that I know about the budget, I learned from this guy. The Massapequa School community, its students, its teachers, its staff, its parents, and this superintendent are forever indebted to his exemplary, to this exemplary leader. Alan, we wish you well in retirement, and please know that all of us thank you for your contribution to the students of the Massapequa Public Schools. Okay, thank you. Congratulations, Alan. Thank you. Okay, so, um, up next are personnel uh, appointments. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So Second. Second. Uh, all in, oh, Mr. Schilling. <laughs> uh, sat close to the microphone this time. 
Uh, one uh, retirement to announce in the personal actions in the non-certificated staff, you'll notice the retirement of Ms. Terry Stallone. Terry is a health monitor for us at Birch Lane Elementary School and has been with us since 2004. Uh, Mr. Espetti has mentioned to us that over the course of her career in Massapequa, she's been a source of encouragement and support for many children with a wide range of health needs. Um, uh, she helps these kids overcome uh, many of their obstacles with great success, has been a permanent fixture and such a valued member of Birch Lane and they wish her many years of health and happiness in her retirement. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And we um, offer our congratulations to Ms. Salona, her retirement, and wish her well. Uh, next is the personnel non-certificated appointments. May I have a motion, please? Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next are our uh, informational items, and uh, Mrs. Iconis, you're up first. So I'd like to take this opportunity to update the Board of Education and the school community on some matters that matter. Um, there are a number of things that I would like to discuss this evening, but the first is that there seems to be some light at the end of this year-long dark tunnel. The number of positive cases are decreasing. Vaccines are increasing. That's good news. Hopefully, we'll be back to some sense of normalcy very soon. However, as a district, we are still functioning under the guidelines issued by the Department of Health, the State Education Department, the Governor, and the County Executive. As we have seen in the press releases, it appears that the state is relaxing some restrictions, and we are hopeful and we will follow these adjustments very, very close, carefully and closely. I, I'd like to take an opportunity to compliment the Board of Education, our <coughs> district leaders, many of whom are in the audience this evening, the parents, the staff, the teachers, and the students who have been following our health protocols so diligently. We have not seen school spread in our schools, and we haven't seen it in our sports program, with the exception of one case. That's quite remarkable, because I'm sure that many of you in this audience are aware that we have been really open for business since October. Yeah, we hit some bumps, but we said we would watch the data, we would watch the numbers, and we would make the adjustments. And did that mean that students and teachers were quarantining? Of course it did. Did that mean that certain grade levels went on to complete remote, or schools at some point went remote, or even wings? in our buildings went remote, but we were open. And what some districts are experiencing today, and you, you see them, the Manhasset, Wanto is going through a rough period right now. We did go through that rough period back in the fall, but we were steadfast. We, we said we were going to follow the health guidelines. We were going to follow the safety, follow the numbers, but our objective was to keep these kids in school, in-person learning, because we know that that's best for them as much as we could. And we accomplished that. That is a great, great feat. So, with that said, um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some increase in school activities and events. I'm not gonna touch upon every one of them, but I want the community to be aware that our principals have been working tirelessly, or all well, principals and administrative teams, the whole leadership group, working tirelessly and really trying to identify areas that we could safely reinstate and reopen. So, remember I said our numbers are, have been low. I think today we had two or three cases district-wide, right, Amory? Three. Three, okay. 
district law. That's exceptionally low for one of the largest districts in Nassau County. So I would like to announce that our summer programs, we are planning for a full complement of summer programs. Right now, there's a few different scenarios on the table. And we have been meeting, and we will continue to meet weekly. Mr. O'Donnell is involved. The principals are involved. Mr. Pirapato on the sports side. Mr. Green on the music side. So we will be running a plan for a full complement of our summer programs. Circa 2019, because remember, nothing happened last year. And then also, we're planning for a modified program if restrictions are still in place. We don't know what it means. We don't know if there will be a cap, okay? But we're working on a couple of different scenarios. Now, when I say a full complement of our programs, I have the list, and if you indulge me, Summer school, grades nine through 12. We have the special ed programs, both on the elementary level and on the secondary level. We're planning for the teen center, that's grades six through eight. Summer rec in all of the elementaries with the exception of Eastlake, because the construction there would not allow for that. Some fine arts, marching band camp, Lego camp, <coughs> driver's ed, our sports camps. So things are in the works for these. That's good news. We expect registration to probably be held in May. Okay? Um, and we will be looking for our student leaders' applications probably in late April. Okay, so we're working on that right now. And as I said, our next meeting is next week. Mrs. Lightcom, I have a question. Yes. I know you mentioned that Eastlake we wouldn't be able to run at the school, but I just want to clarify. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yes. He, thank you for catching that. Okay. We'll still have a rec program, but Eastlake will go to McKenna School for the rec program. Thank you. Okay. okay, so it's not that we're cutting them out. And then, as I mentioned, our administrative teams on the elementary and on the secondary levels have been working to identify activities and events that we may, may be able to return to an in-person setting rather than virtual. This includes certain clubs, end of the year activities, etc. cetera. You're gonna be hearing more about those very soon. But I know that Ms. Lowell was in the, the audience this evening. Wave, Ms. Lowell, there she is. The principal of MHS, and earlier today, Ms. Lowe released an email um, for, to the senior class about all of the celebrations uh, for the class, for the Massapequa High School graduating class of 2021. I know it was very well received and the kids and the parents are delighted to hear that. There are so many things that are being planned for them. We can't just let them leave, uh, you know, the walls of, of, of this building without some special celebration for everything that they've been through. You're working on everything from graduation to prom, but at this point, we don't know what we can have. But just as I mentioned earlier, we have many options that we are looking at. The sports season kicked off in January. We just completed a condensed winter season. The fall season began on Monday, this past Monday, on the varsity level, and middle school sports will begin um, sometime within the next March couple of weeks, in March, right. Um, and our spring season begins on April 20th. Okay. And we've had a mix of high risk and uh, low risk sports, but as I said, what we, what we had is we had one case Okay, and we have been running this since January. In the fine arts department, a week in June, perhaps on the 4th and 5th of June, but don't, you know, I don't swear to it. They're working on the dates. Uh, we want to give our, our kids that opportunity to, to experience the musical this year. A little bit different, but it should be fun. 
And if Burner were play, planning a musical review entitled Burner Oldies Cafe, and you'll be hearing more about that very, very shortly. These are just a few items that are under discussion and consideration. We are committed to reopening and reinstituting programs that we can accomplish in a safe manner, following the health guidelines, which seem to be changing very rapidly. With regard to the number of students in distance learning, I haven't really updated the community in a while on this matter. In our elementary distance learning center, where Ms. Lisa Silveri is supervisor, we have 164 students. Those are elementary students, grades K through five, coming from each one of our six elementary schools. That's down a little bit, and I think it will be further reduced shortly. Lisa. At Burner, we have um, 162 students that are on distance learning. At Ames, 72 students. And the highest number is at Massapequa High School, which sits at about 440 students. I want to take a moment now just to um, inform everyone who may or may not know about the assessments, the New York State assessments, particularly the three through eight assessments and the Regents exams. Um, the, the federal government, uh, the United States Department of Education, did release a memo stating that they would not um, grant a blanket waiver to exempt these exams from happening this year. However, they did invite the states, the individual states, to plead their case. Um, New York has pleaded its case and has, it has actually um, submitted a waiver request. We're still waiting to hear about that. But at this present time, it is our understanding that the three through eight assessments in ELA and mathematics will be given unless New York State does get this waiver. And on the Regents' side, it is our understanding that if we do not get this waiver, the Regents exams to be administered in June 2021 will be algebra, English language arts, the living environment, and earth science. Because that, those are Regents that are required to be administered through the federal government. But as I, as I said, the New York State Department of Education has requested that, that waiver, and we're waiting for that. They are also requesting that the summer regents be canceled. Those would be the regents that, would, that are administered typically in August of 2021. So as soon as we know, you shall know. Next probably one of my last points is, and this is going to go out via email at the beginning of next week. Um, there was a calendar revision, and I do know that there, there has been some confusion, because there was a calendar re revision in mid-August, right after the hard copy of the calendar was mailed out to the community. So we ask you to please go to the online for the accurate calendar. School will be in session on Thursday, May 27th, and Friday, May 28th, okay? We have had two snow days thus far. The first one was December 17th, which we will be making up on that Friday, May 28th. That's known as a reserve day. The 27th was should never have been there because the, the district revised its calendar so that on the 27th we were always in session. And then we, we closed also on February 1st. We do not make up our second snow day. So right now we're making up Friday, May 28th. We always had Thursday, May 27th in play. 
So if we have to use another snow day, which I hope we don't, okay, the third snow day or emergency day would be Tuesday, April 6th, which is the Tuesday after Easter, after Easter Sunday. So there will be a clarification so that everyone in the community is aware of exactly when school will be in session. So that's really my report. Um, I think it's hopeful good news. Uh, and as I said, I know the governor came out and, and made some adjustments yesterday, and I hear that there are more to come, perhaps tomorrow or the beginning of next week. And um, hopefully we can start school uh, in a much in September in a much more normal way. Uh, we all pray for that, so thank you very much. Any questions? Thanks. Any questions, board? Uh, yeah, yes, I do have a, a few questions. Thank you so much for the update and um, for obviously pressing forward and trying to move things in a direction where we're opening up more activities. It's crucially important for the students at this point. I think it's important for um, family students to know how much the board is advocating for students right now with respect to opening up events. We really are working very hard, tirelessly, to see what, if anything, can be done regarding um, six feet for contact tracing, 50 person caps, um, you know, uh, basically the restrictions that are on music programs right now. So we are exploring different avenues and we are working very hard to see what we can do. Um, with that said, I know that we were talking about opening certain activities and certain things we can't, but one of the things, you know, I know we always try to do things consistently and evenly across activities. However, right now we're still under the 12 feet rule for singing and for um, band, you know, wind instruments. Mm -hmm. However, um, with respect to orchestra, it doesn't seem like that falls under that guidelines, so if there is something that we can do, I'm at a point now where if we can do anything for any student, I think that we should try to move forward. I understand that that means that part of a music program might be starting to operate where another part can't, but I think that anything we can do for any kid, just because they are breaking and hurting, and if we can give anyone an activity to return to, I think it's important. Um, with that said, also if we can look into any sort of modified um, concerts going forward with respect to even the elementary level, especially those fifth graders, they haven't been able to perform or showcase any of their new skills from fourth grade and now they're entering fifth grade and they haven't had any opportunity. If there's something small that can be done outside with students spread apart. Um, and you know, I know we've been working a lot with the seniors and we need to be recognizing them any way we can, but also the moving up ceremonies and activities at the elementary level. I think I mentioned it last time, now that we're allowed to have sports, I truly hope that we're moving forward with activities like a field day, because I look at that in a similar light. If there's ways we can be creative and cohort the students um, and have some sort of you know, structured way of doing it, but giving them those final moments that they would like at elementary school, I think that that's important. Um, and with respect to the um, seniors, I know that the senior sports have been able to do a little minor, you know, smaller level celebrations for senior nights and things like that. And I know that the little Shapaharas right now, um, hoping maybe things can change and we can do more with that. But if it's still basically a piece together virtual type of performance, if there's something we can do for seniors, a small celebration where maybe if we're allowed to put two spectators, you know, sort of, so to speak, to come in for the seniors so that their parents can see them maybe on a stage, handed that rose for the last time. I think that that's important. Yes, I, I agree. And just with, uh, with respect to Little Shop of Horrors, it will be filmed live. These kids will be live okay. on the stage. Okay. okay. Just, we will live stream it because of the, um, the audience. But we're looking at ways of, of maybe making something happen in this room. Right. And then again, if obviously things open up, maybe we'll be able to do more. Obviously, we're under certain restrictions right now. But just something, again, to recognize those seniors um, that, that would be really important. Um, the one other thing I think. Oh, you started to mention ELA, Regents exams, yes. things of that nature. 
Do we have any sense of when we would be notified if the waiver was accepted? Have they said anything of a timeline? Um, they, they only refer to it in the memo as that the regions will, well, the regions will be meeting again in mid-March. That's all I've seen. But I, they, they are awaiting actually a response from the federal governor. Okay. The governor. Um, and then if they, I thought I saw something, I might be incorrect, regarding that if we do have to do the regions that um, the New York State isn't going to make it part of the graduation requirements, is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah. And then will we have also then the ability, I'm assuming, to determine um, how it would count with respect to our own students, whether or not it would count at all, or absolutely. regarding the no harm we, policy? We would, make, we would make those determinations. Okay, so at this juncture, it probably is too premature because we're still hoping that they won't even occur, but if they occur, then we'll have the opportunity to revisit that and make sure that their students aren't harmed in any way. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, can I mention something? Sure. Oh, thank you for your uh, presentation, Ms. Iconis, and I, I echo uh, Ms. Caramel's uh, thoughts about this entire board doing everything possible to advocate for our kids and all the activities, so we're hopeful. We're thankful for what we have, but we're very hopeful that we're going to have uh, you know, many, many more activities for, for all the students. Uh, getting back to the uh, athletic events, I just want to clarify that we're under Section 8 guidance as far as uh, spectators at events, and we're, we're held to two visitors per home event, and then uh, we are not, as uh, Mass Speaker Chief fans, allowed to, to go to a, a way event. So uh, that's Section 8 guidance. I did want to mention to Ms. Iconis, uh, one of the highlights of any football game is seeing uh, hundreds of Chief Nation at the game. And I know um, this entire board and the administration is thinking of creative ways that maybe some of the home football games where we can get more than just uh, you know, two spectators in our home, in our home stands for, uh, for the benefit of our athletes and then for Chief Nation. So I know Ms. Iconis is uh, working with uh, Mr. Piopato about ways we could possibly do that. So again, getting back to the kids, uh, opening up as much as we can possibly can uh, in regard to the, the guidelines that we're under. So I want to thank uh, the community for your support. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, in the last couple of weeks to see some of the var uh, varsity athletes at some of the home events and see the joy on their faces. It's just been incredible. And I want to also thank and acknowledge all the coaches who are working on the very difficult uh, conditions as well as Mr. Pierpato to put together a first class uh, varsity program uh, uh, highlighting all the chief uh, varsity athletes, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Sure, or Allison? Um, well, thank you, uh, Mrs. Iconis, for the report, and we thanks. Uh, we, we, we are very thankful for everything you are doing, and while we have some leadership here, I, I just want to personally thank you. Um, you know, we, the board, yes, we were very dedicated to these things, but it was you guys out there that had to put it into motion. And so um, we, we thank you, so, you know, for your professionalism, for, for everything you've done and your dedication to our students um, and getting, this, this, getting the schools open and keeping them open. And, uh, and then, of course, now as we go down the road and bring back more things for them, um, we wouldn't be able to do it without you. So thank you um, to the leadership, to our coaches, to administration, and to everybody. Um, and we look forward to hopefully, hopefully finishing off with the with the uh, most mostly normal year or as normal as we can be. So um, we thank everybody for their efforts and for everything that they've been doing. So thank you. Okay. As we take those baby steps. Yeah. Yes, baby steps. These baby guys steps. Are the best of the best. Thank you. Uh, next um, is Mr. Adcock and the proposed uh, budget discussion number two.
Um, the slide that's on the screen right now is a snapshot of the current year's budget. And you see the area that is highlighted in yellow. Those are the areas of uh, construction that we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, back a month ago on February 4th, we talked about and we uh, discussed the general support areas, people transportation, employee benefits, more of the administrative areas. Tonight is the meat and potatoes of the school district, and that is construction. Before we talk about um, next year's budget, just some financial facts with regard to Massapequa schools. Um, we have an operating underneath the financial plan um, for the last uh, 21 years. Uh, plan that was adopted January of 2000, then readopted February of 2008, and then again in April of 2015. That financial plan has served as the cornerstone for uh, us being able to uh, move forward with our programs and really our financial stability. Um, the financial plan is due for an update again, and I anticipate next year that um, that, that plan would be, would be updated. Also, for the past um, six or seven years, uh, the board has adopted what's called a reserves plan, and that reserves plan is adopted typically in November uh, of the school year. And what that reserves plan does is it outlines in a very detailed <coughs> format all of the specific reserve accounts and fund balance that the school district has, how those fund balances were used, how they were accumulated, when they were approved, etc. So it is a very transparent way on an annual basis to present to the community um, the, the finances of the school district, the reserves and fund balance, and certainly um, address any questions and then readopt that plan. Um, our taxes in Massapequa are um, below the county average. You'll see that there's a slide coming up that speaks of costs, but our taxes are below the county average, but about median in the county. We're talking median, about median on average, um, a little bit below. Um, we're also on good standing. Uh, with regard to something called the New York State Comptroller's Fiscal Stress Monitoring Report. This report was uh, last published January of 2021, so um, just about a month ago, and uh, we're in good standing. There are um, 31 districts statewide that are in some form of fiscal distress, and what's interesting about this report is that it's like a golf game. The lower the score you get, the better you are. And I will tell you that Massachusetts scored very, very low, in this report. And since this report has been in place, it came out and started to be uh, prepared by the State Comptroller in 2013. Every single year, Massapequa has been in good standing on that particular report. And then um, our credit rating. Certainly putting together a financial plan, having significant reserves, sufficient reserves. Um, we've been able to upgrade over the last 20 years our Moody's credit rating five times. So we're currently rated a double A1 uh, the credit rate the school district. How does that help the community? Recently, we um, borrowed a $9.7 million 15 bond. It was uh, a bond to finance our construction projects that are underway, and we borrowed that at a rate of 1.37%. That's a pretty good rate for a 15-year for borrowing. Um, again, uh, certainly beating out the 15-year mortgage rate. Um, also, on an, on an annual basis, we borrow a short-term cash flow instrument called the Tax Anticipation Note, and we borrow that one-year instrument at a rate of 0.31, so one-third of 1%. So our good credit rating helps us to reduce our interest costs, and then we can take that money and invest it into our, where it really matters in our structural program. With the way the district allocates its resources, does, as you would expect the school district to do. Almost 81% of our resources go into student programs and 12% uh, into facilities and capital improvements and 7.3% into the administration of the, of the school districts. This bar chart um, illustrates the total spending per, school, uh, per student of all of the 41 K-12 school systems in Nassau County. It comes from this report which is called the BOCES Annual Study of School Costs, and it uh, indicates and calculates the cost on a per pupil basis for every school district in Nassau County. We fall uh, a bit below the average. Um, you can see where we fall, just below the median and, and below the average. If you take that and then summarize that report, the average school district spends uh, approximately $31,000 per student, and Massapequa spends about $29,000 so a difference of approximately $2,000 less per student we spend here in Massapequa 
Certainly a part of that is our size or economy of scale, but it's an important point that the community should know how our spending is uh, on a per pupil basis compared with other school districts in Nassau County. Now on to some more specifics as it relates to the 2021-22 budget. So there are some drivers that are driving this year's, this year's budget. Uh, let's start with district-wide salaries. You can see that district-wide salaries, um, district-wide are up 1.7 million. That's an increase of 1.54%. That includes the increments in those district salaries. And uh, largely, the, the salary lines are contractual in nature. So overwhelmingly, uh, those costs are dictated by uh, employee contracts. Um, transportation, a 2% increase in transportation. Our pension costs are up uh, a bit. Uh, the retirement system rate increased a small amount from 9.53% to 9.8% next year. So you see um, a 3.9% increase in our um, pension costs. With regard to health insurance, probably one of the lower increases that the districts that the district has experienced over the years, 1.15% increase in health insurance. That's because in the current year's budget, we had 8% built in as an increase as the health insurance uh, providers told us this time last year. However, the increase came in at about 4%. And so because of the increases this year coming lower, the expenditure base was already in health insurance line, so the increase for next year is, um, is considerably lower. Social Security is what it is. Uh, there's an increase of 705,000 in debt service. That relates to the, uh, the bond that I spoke to where we got the 1.37% interest rate. Um, the first payment is due next year, and that was a, a voter-approved um, capital construction bond issue. And then, um, as uh, Mrs. Iaconis indicated, our superintendent, um, summer recreation is coming back, hopefully, in full force without any restrictions. And so we put an additional 365000 in the budget, restored um, all of the costs necessary for a robust uh, summer recreation program. So right now we're looking at what our cost increases are versus our revenue increases. At our next budget meeting, two weeks from now, we'll talk in detail about revenue. But I will tell you at this point that the tax cap came in this year lower than the 2% that uh, people typically speak about as a tax cap. It came in at 1.23%. And what that means for Massachusetts specifically is that that gap between 2% and 1.23 means about $1.2 million in revenue that we can't raise next year to support our costs. So with that said, we've looked at our cost increases and we've rolled our programs forward. Um, and now we, we know what our revenue increases um, are going to be, largely based on the tax cap. And so right now there are some further reductions in the budget that uh, was presented tonight that are going to be needed of about 817,000. Uh, currently, um, my office and the Human Resources Office are working very collaboratively together to, uh, to finalize the staffing for next year. And being mindful of that, um, looking at um, the savings that we need of 817000 and we will be uh, discussing that over the next week on how to close that gap and uh, confident that we will be back two weeks from now uh, with a budget that does close that gap and obviously it has to be balanced. So that's, that's very, very important. Overall, this section of the budget, the instructional section of the budget, is up 1.08%. So when you look at instructional costs, current year's budget versus proposed next year's budget up 1.08%. And the budget overall, at this point in time, is increased by 1.76%. However, as I mentioned, we need um, to find and close about an $817,000 gap. And when that occurs, I'm, I'm confident that the budget uh, will be under 1.5%. So ultimately, the district or it will be likely that the district will be going to the community to approve a budget increase of under 1.5% and a tax increase of 1.23, uh, so under 1.25%. And that's pretty much a nutshell as to, as to where we are. Um, calendar of our budget meetings. Uh, here we are on March 4th, workshop on the instructional budget. 
two weeks from tonight, March 18th, workshop on the tax levy, as well as the entire budget. Um, on April 8th, the Board of Education is scheduled to adopt the budget. On May 6th, there's a required hearing. In fact, interestingly enough, this budget hearing is the only meeting that is required by the state to have with the public when it comes to budget development. So the law says a school district can um, develop a budget, a board of education can adopt a budget, and the only time that the public is required to be involved is on the budget hearing. That's not how things are done in Massachusetts. We want to involve the community along the process. So when, we, so when the board gets to the budget adoption and then gets ultimately to the budget hearing, there are no surprises. We know what the, you know we know what's what's transpiring and what's unfolding. And then May 18th is the is the budget vote. Before um, I uh, take questions, I just want to indicate that in this particular in this particular budget, um, there are some um, fluctuations in some costs, um, specifically under the occupational um, education area. Those are lines 99 and 100. You'll see that um, the Levittown program, which is a highly successful program, and we send many students, uh, vocational ed, occupational ed students, to the Levittown program. You see that we haven't budgeted anything there next, for next year to zero. And there's a reason for that. If you go to the line right below it, we've taken the budget from the Levittown program and moved it to BOCES. That's because BOCES is now operating the Levittown program at Levittown School. So it's the same program, however, BOCES is now operating the program, and so when payments are made for students going to that program, we pay folks instead of the Levittown School District. Um, in addition to that, um, there are some salary codes where you see some decreases. For example, in the uh, library media area, um, that's not because we're reducing services in that area, it's because we had some retirements. And so the decreases from this year's budget to next year's budget is as a result of retirements. Um, under the um, psychology services line, um, last year we showed 17 psychologists, this year we show 16 psychologists, and with a reduction in the cost in that line. It's not because we're reducing the service. We still have 17 psychologists. However, so 18, 18, two women. Two women, so thank you, Bob. Uh, it's not because we're reducing service, it's because we're now allowed to uh, charge another psychologist to a federal grant. So instead of the tax uh, uh, levy paying for the taxes, paying for the cost of that psychologist, um, you've, got the, you've got a federal grant paying for that psychologist as well as the other psychologist that's already there. So, um, and the same with the social work services. Uh, you see that there's a decrease in the salary line, not because we're reducing service, it's because we have a retirement in the area of um, salaries and social workers. So um, the costs are, are a bit less for next year, but it's the same level of service. So with that said, what questions can I answer for you? Do you want to also discuss the 10% reductions? Sure. sure. Um, throughout the, the budget, not only in this area, but also in the, in the first area that we, uh, that we talked about, uh, we've made an adjustment in the area of salary and the area of um, supplies, equipment, and textbooks. And so we've reduced those, those three areas throughout the budget by 10%. Mm -hmm. That is the reason that was done. First, we're, as I mentioned earlier, we're looking to close the gap of 817,000, so it helps us do that. But um, almost more importantly, um, throughout and after the, the first budget presentation, information came to us from residents indicating well, what happens if um, we have to buy COVID supplies next year. We're hoping that the school year steps off in a seamless transition as we've come to expect prior pre-COVID. So what we've done is in the event that we need some additional disinfecting supplies for a period of time into the 2021-22 school year, we've taken $100,000 and added that to the facilities custodial supply line. And so in the event that we need to purchase some additional uh, disinfecting uh, supplies, that, that provision is there. All right, thank you. Do we just want to go page by page? Yeah. All right. So, okay, so line 61 through 74. Does anyone have any questions? 
No. Um. Okay. No questions. Okay. Uh, next page is seventy-five through ninety-two. Um. Um, did you speak to the increase in the um, line 76, the salaries for 6 through 12? Sure. Um, the reason you see a, a decrease in line 75, which is um, salaries K to 5, uh, elementary salaries, is because we had a lot of retirements in, mm -hmm. that, particular, in that particular code, and not so much in, in 6 to 12, not as, as significant in 6 to 12. So you see... Um, a little bit of an increase um, in line 76 and a decrease in line 75. Okay. You'll remember last year you had 13 retirements in the elementary realm. Mm -hmm. And while we replaced all of those salaries, we replaced them with newer oh, teachers that are making less than salary next year. And that's why it went down. Thank you. Anyone have any questions on this page? Okay. All right, next page, 94 through 113. <coughs> Um, I think this is where um, this is summer school continue act in occupational education. So this is where I had mentioned regarding occupational education, the uh, line 99, which is the Levittown program. Um, all of the uh, budget appropriation for line 99 is going into line 100, which is Bozeman's occupational ed. Right. Okay. Um, 114 through 132. Any questions here? Okay. All right, seeing none, we'll go to the next um, line. Uh, 133 through 149. Question on sure. uh, psychology, uh, psychological services. Sure. Uh, and maybe Mr. McCall, uh, Dr. McCall might want to comment. Uh, the Northwell psychologist that is uh, working with our district. W what line item are, mm -hmm. are they under? That would be in line 141, and that would reflect um, the district plus the partnerships with mental health providers. And right. um, you may recall in the current year's budget there was an increase in that line to reflect. Um, our participations in this in that program. Thank you, and that's a year by year uh, consulting agreement, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else have any questions for the, on the board? No. Um, does anyone in the audience have a question just about on the budget, only pertaining to the budget? Any questions or comment? No. Okay, I guess you did a really great job, Mr. Adcock. No one really has um, any questions. Uh, you know, it's, it's, again, all the programs and services are here. Yeah. Um, it's kind of un unremarkable in the respect that um, there are no, you know, major changes right. coming out of where we've been. You know, yeah. we're, we're in a good place. Right, we are. And, um, and, I, and also, I mean, I guess, we, Lynch and we had a budget and finance uh, meeting on Monday. They had yes. some suggestions that, you know, to, to shore some of this, the, the explanations that you gave, and we're going to, have that sure. for the next a attached to the budget um, is, uh, is an explanation page and mm -hmm. in consultation with the budget and finance committee made some good suggestions on how to just better clarify some of the uh, some of the fluctuations and, and uh, describe it so i'll be doing that and that will be um, the next, two weeks from next awesome thank you so much then is that okay so i guess thank we'll you. move on thank you mr adcock we appreciate it Um, the next is the pandemic response plan, Mr. Schilling and Mr. O'Donnell. Thanks. I'm just going to pop this off real quick. Um, as the board's aware, um, the district maintains emergency management plans that we review and update on an annual basis. And in addition to being Practically, a practical and sensible thing to do. It also keeps us in compliance with New York State law. 
that requires us to maintain such plans. And these are the things that you hear uh, Mr. O'Donnell and Mr. Flynn mention to you at least on an annual basis of our plans for dealing with um, a natural disaster that may occur or a fire within the building or sheltering in place when there's police activity outside the buildings. Um, and what we have in front of you today is um, a revision to New York State law that requires us now to include pandemic response into our emergency management plan. So back in this fall, back this past fall, those uh, regulations from New York State were revised to amend that force and require us by April 1st to have everything in place in our emergency management plan um, for pandemic response and identified specific areas that we had to address. So this winter we went through um, and spoke with folks at BOCES to put, help us put together a template and identify the areas that were required to be implemented, which spoke mostly to um, staff uh, organization, identifying individuals that had to be working on site versus the ability to work remotely, um, also identifying per, uh, personal protective equipment and stockpiling certain things and, and cleanliness and, and cleaning um, responsibilities. So the plan um, has been drafted. It has been shared with the leadership of each of our bargaining units. Uh, they have provided us input as well that has been worked back into the draft. And it has been up on the district's website since the end of February uh, in draft form. Um, Mr. Piotrowski is identifying on the screen right now the page on the website where it is. It's under the facilities plan. And if you go to the proposed emergency management plan and health piece there, you can bring up the draft. And uh, it's available for the community to review and the board as well. Um, the next step for its adoption would be for the board to consider it to be added to the, um, to the response plan at the next board meeting in March, March 18th. And that would keep us in compliance to have it all ready and identified and in place by April 1st. So I'll stop there and ask the board if they have any questions on the plan specifically or the process of profile. Right. Now, I, I did read through it, but and I'm, I noticed that it's very COVID-19 specific. Um, and is that the way that it was this to, to get us into compliance for this year? Um, you know, instead of more generally, because I mean, who knows what the next pandemic is going to be and will it be, you know, cleaning and masks or it might be some other completely different thing that we might need. Um, so is this like flexible, changeable? Yeah, is it just for COVID-19 or is it supposed to really be transcending whatever pandemic comes from China? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Certainly, you know, you, you, you can't look through a document like this and not have COVID right for 19 and, and the things that we've gone through over the last year, right in the front of your mind when you're developing it and looking in hindsight, what could we have done better? What could we have done differently? And then implementing also what's what we're doing now and using that as your template. Um, but it, to, your, to your point, it, it should be there to develop plans in a more general sense for pandemic, but you know, if you look at the kinds of things that we did do during COVID, which was all in an effort to stop the spread of a virus. So whether it's COVID or a different virus, a pandemic, you know, would those same kinds of protocols be implemented if it was a different virus that comes through, such as masks, such as social distancing, uh, protective equipment, for, you know, and those kinds of things. So I think we all felt that the answer was, yeah, that's probably what the next, knock on wood, it doesn't happen, but the next virus that comes through would our response be similar? And we, I think we, generally speaking, we believe it would be. Thank you very much. Does uh, anyone else have any questions on the pandemic report? No? Okay. okay. Very much. So just to review at your next meeting under uh -huh. resolutions, you'll see a resolution to adopt. Okay. Uh, and then once that's in place, we'll be all set. All right. Thanks very Thanks. much. Thank you very sorry, much. Sorry, sorry, I just have a quick question. Oh, Allison sure. has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Um, in the plan, it talks about PPE and face covering availability, and so that we could, you know, the district would be providing um, employees, it says, with an acceptable face covering at no cost to the employee. So as long as this plan is in place, do we then need to have a budget for face coverings? As of right now, we do have a stockpile. Um, so unless we deplete the stockpile that we have, we would, we would um, 
restock that as we go, but we're, we're in pretty good shape with the stockpile that we have. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so we're on to our resolutions. Does anyone have any? Huh? Lisa has one. I'm sorry, Lisa. I skipped you, Miss Silveri. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, proposed policy on gender-neutral bathrooms, Miss Silveri. Sorry about that. So I think we said we think we, we were mostly in compliance with this, right? I mean, we did have already single some single use bathrooms were already indicated. There are some in mm -hmm. some buildings, yes. And now we are required to go through and, and make sure that all of them are in compliance. We are in the process of doing that with new signage. And about how many bathrooms do we have that are like in that? total? It's about 115 district wide. Mm -hmm. And you you were all, you also had mentioned something about ADA compliant, right? Correct. Uh, so we did have to order some new signage. Uh, something just came out today, actually, uh, just to make sure that everybody is updated and the, the signs now have to also be, which should be, but ADA compliant, so mm -hmm. those to follow much more restrictive guidelines when purchasing signage. Okay. Everybody good? Any questions? No? Thank you very much. Okay. If the board chooses to move forward with this policy, they can do so at the board meeting on April 8th. April 8th. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, sorry, I got ahead of myself there. Uh, so now we're up to the resolutions, for real this time. Uh, does anyone have any questions uh, on these uh, resolutions? All right, so buckle up, there's a lot of them. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Number one, resolve that the Board of Education approve the IEP recommendations as per the attached. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Number two, resolve that the Board of Education approve the students listed for home instruction. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number three, resolve that the Board of Education approve the appointments listed below. Um, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number four, resolve that the Board of Education approve the contract between Nassau BOCES and the Massapequa School District for participation in the Regional Summer School for Summer 2021 as per the attached and authorizes the Board President to sign said contract. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Dr. Defano? Is this tip is typical? Yeah, this is the same contract we've been following, working through Nassau BOCES. Mr. Shilley and I have uh, reviewed it several times. It does allow Superintendent, we expect our summer school to be live in person, but should the need be for distance learning, um, Superintendent and Board could make that determination and still allow the program to run. Awesome. Thank you very much. I just have one question. Oh, sure. where, where is it going to be held this year, um, summer, Dr. Fano? Uh, the summer school will be at the uh, Ames campus. Thanks, James. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number Five, resolve that the Board of Education adopt the revi revised corrective action plan as attached. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Mr. Adcock? Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Um, mm -hmm. If this resolution looks familiar, it should, because you uh, approved this back in October. So let me explain. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an excellent audit last mm -hmm. year, and uh, very, very few comments, really just comments in the extra classroom accounts. However, when this was filed, um, we filed it with the State of New York, and they said to us, this year they are requiring that the response include a date into which the action will be taken. And so um, the only difference in what this revision says, it just says on the last page, it says action was taken with regard to the above response on November 10th, 2020. And the state required uh, you to adopt it once again with that, um, with that additional sentence. Okay, well, thank you very much. 
Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so um, resolutions uh, uh, number six. Resolved that the Board of Education approve a credit change order in the amount of $15,951.05 from Mount Olympus Restoration, Inc. for Phase One Fairfield Classroom Renovation Project. This change order is for unused construction allowance. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Mr. Adcock? Yes, thank you. Um, resolutions six through nine deal with credit change orders. This one is specific to the Fairfield classroom renovations. Money comes back to the school district. Um, so in essence, the contract is less than what uh, the board had approved uh, when, it, when it awarded the bid. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number seven, resolve that the Board of Education approve a credit change order in the amount of $12,268.74 from Mount Olympus Restoration, Inc. for phase one of Lockhart Classroom Renovation Project. This change order is for unused construction allowance. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Number eight, resolve that the Board of Education approve a credit change order to Best Climate Control Corp. for phase one Fairfield Classroom Renovation Project for unused allowance money of $12,000 as detailed in the attached Documentation. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Number nine, resolved that the Board of Education approve a credit change order to Corporate Electric Tech, Inc. for unused allowance money of $799.02 as detailed in the attached documentation. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 10, resolved that the Board of Education award classroom renovations, general construction at Eastlake Elementary School to renew contracting and restoration in the amount of $474,900 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? Second. Second. Mr. Adcock. Thank you. Um, yes, resolutions 10 through 22 are pertain to uh, moving forward into phase three of our capital construction projects in our schools. Uh, it's moving along very nicely, mm -hmm. and I'm pleased to say that we're, uh, we're in phase three as of um, this spring. Awesome. So um, again, on this particular bid, there were 18 bids that were received. The opening was done on January 19th, and you're awarded the lowest responsible bid meeting specification. Great, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed, any <coughs> abstentions? <coughs> Number 11, resolved that the Board of Education award classroom renovations, general construction at Birch Lane School to preferred construction in the amount of $444,000 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any uh, abstentions? Number 12, resolved that the Board of Education award classroom renovations, general construction at Burner Middle School to preferred construction in the amount of $516,000 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 13, resolved that the Board of Education award the classroom renovations, general construction at Lockhart School to Preferred Construction, Inc. in the amount of $500,000 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 14, resolved that the Board of Education award the classroom renovations electrical bid at Burner Middle School to Cooper Power and Lighting Corp in the amount of $168,000 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 15, resolved that the Board of Education award the interior renovations bid HVAC at Burner Middle School to Intricate Tech Solutions in the amount of $235,000 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 16, resolved that the Board of Education award the classroom renovations electrical bid at East Lake Elementary School to Palace Electrical Contractors, Inc. in the amount of $134,000 
as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 17, resolved that the Board of Education award the classroom renovations electrical bid at Lockhart Elementary School to Palace Electrical Contractors, Inc. in the amount of $137,000 as documented in the attached memorandum. The lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 18, resolved that the Board of Education award the classroom renovations electrical bid at Birch Lane School to Cooper Power and Lighting Corp in the amount of $158,000 as documented in the attached memorandum. The lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 19, resolved that the Board of Education award the toilet renovations general construction at Birch Lane School to JVS Sprint Enterprises, Inc. in the amount of $207,827.94 as documented in the attached memorandum. The lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Almost there. Number 20, <laughs> resolved that the Board of Education award the interior renovations general construction bid at Burner Middle School to renew contracting and restoration Inc. in the amount of $463,500 as documented in the attached memorandum, the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 21, resolved that the Board of Education award the Canopy Construction Bid at East Lake Elementary School to Veritas Construction Services, Inc. in the amount of $124,000 as documented in the attached memorandum. The lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number 22, resolved that the Board of Education award the interior renovations bid electrical at Burner Middle School to Cooper Power and Lighting Corp in the amount of $236,000 as documented in the attached memorandum. The lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, I just want to pull up this other one if I can. Oh, my touch screen is not working. Okay, and we're up to 23. Okay, so number 23, resolved that the Board of Education accept a donation of $250 from Stephanie and David Dalquist for the purpose of establishing a scholarship in honor of Mr. Roland H. Merton as per the attached. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, Dr. Fasano. Can you speak to this, uh, the scholarship? For the money to be accepted by the board, we will make the scholarship available to our seniors this year through Mr. Weber and the guidance counselors through our uh, committee process. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, let me thank the uh, Dalquist family for their donation. Um, we appreciate it. Let's see, and the last. Uh, number 24, resolved that the Board of Education accept a donation of $1,000 from Mr. Brad Sherman for the purpose of establishing the Sherman Pepper Family Annual Scholarship as per the attached. Um, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Um, Dr. Fasano, this one as well, same thing. To be part of the uh, Senior Scholarship Award presentation. A nice addition. Another, another, thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And we thank Mr. Sherman as well for his um, generous donation. So that will do it for the res resolutions. Uh, then we're up correspondence. We received correspondence from Tony Ann Trezeppa, Susan Eng, Melissa McArdle Dol Dolberg, Beth Ann Schiffel, Melissa Seidstein, Adrian Stashen, Diane Tarnowski, and Terry Tona. Uh, updates from the Board of Ed. Um, so I think that um, you have something? Yeah, you oh, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we met on Monday virtually with Budget and Finance, and Mr. Adcock presented um, the committee with the budget. Um, they went over some of the things I think Harry mentioned before. They, went, they wanted um, a little bit more explanation and um, 
I think you guys can see it, right? There is the, can they see the public? It's next. Uh, it's the next time. It'll be on there. Oh, yeah. next time. Yeah. Right. So okay. um, it will be. Uh, it'll be reflected in. Right. Um, and then the. Yeah, so the explanation point. So, so there are a couple of lines where uh, where the committee suggested that the text be a little bit more descriptive, mm -hmm. and so um, good good suggestion. Yes, mm -hmm. they came out with very good suggestions um, through the budget and finance meeting. We also um, came up with the COVID supplies. We felt that it was necessary still for next year to include that in the budget, um, and we talked about you know even the following year, we talked about um, hiring a replacement and. Um, it was another good meeting, and people mm -hmm. bring up good points. And we actually have one of the members here, so I want to thank Mr. Roberts for attending tonight. Yes, thank it's, you. It's good to see your familiar face, and um, we appreciate your activism. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Um, and uh, as far as updates, I, I, I you know, I, and I think uh, you know, Jean, Jean started talking about this. We are behind the scenes, still doing, reaching out to legislators, making appointments, reaching out to other other boards, other board members. Uh, letters, letter campaigns. Uh, we have a lot going on, and um, you know, um, and I, are you meeting tomorrow? I'm uh, hoping to. We're, I'm hoping to be on a call tomorrow with um, some other board members from other districts. We're hoping to have some legislators on there. Really hoping that even Miss Curran will be on there, mm -hmm. in which we'll be um, advocating for her to advocate for us in Albany to get some of these restrictions eased and to get more local co uh, control back because pretty much we're still operating under a minimum set of guidelines that were disseminated in August uh, back in August 26th is the yeah. date of the document and there hasn't been any revisions or any supplemental work done since then so it's frustrating for us it really is because we want to be able to move forward and open more things up as we see as we do more and more activities and see what's safe and, and if we can do a little bit more, but we're still stuck under, mm -hmm. under operating under those minimum guidelines. So mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be hoping that she can help advocate for us along with our other legislators um, up in Albany. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wanna point out too that the, the New York State is not even following the CDC guidelines. There's, their, their guidelines are more stringent than what the CDC is recommending. For instance, with quarantine, um, they say you can quarantine for seven days and with a negative test you can break out of quarantine and New York State has not adopted that yet. So we are trying to put pressure on, the, on our local legislators and we, we implore the community to do the same because this is all for the kids. And I also want to thank, I know Mrs. Icon has thanked everyone, the administration, the staff, the teachers, without you, we couldn't do it from the teachers down to the custodians, to the cafeteria workers, to the secretaries, um, the nurses, without everybody we couldn't do what we do. And the community members are reaching out to us. Other, other board of eds are calling us and asking, how did we do it? So I want to thank everyone, and again, the parents, the students, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, without the buy-in, we couldn't be a leader. We are leading the path with having our kids in school full time, and we really, truly are grateful because mm -hmm. we're setting the example. So mm -hmm. thank you, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, same, thank you. We can't thank everyone enough because the kids need activities, they need to be in school, um, in-person education just can't be supplemented through a screen. It, it's just not the same thing. So the fact that we're able to provide that for any student who wants to and is able to come in, I think is a fantastic thing. Absolutely. Um, and um, just one other thing too, with respect to student advisory, we did have another mm -hmm. meeting in between. Our students were finalizing their presentations. Um, the high school students were finalizing their presentations to the uh, elementary schools. They were going to be virtually um, zooming into the fifth grade classrooms, um, talking about book safety and um, civic responsibility with respect to use of social media. And I believe was that that's this week, right? No, this is no. now. And uh, any uh, update on just how things are going? Yeah, some uh, some nice fat feedback from um, some of the advisors of the high school students did hop on in some cases and uh, obviously spoke to their uh, to their grade level students. Uh, elementary students were really engaged and interested. Uh, a lot of good conversation, uh, particularly about gaming. When they started talking about video gaming mm -hmm. and uh, fifth graders, apparently the hot uh, video game platform is Roblox, mm -hmm. R-O-A-L-O-X. Yep. And they, it's interesting, fifth graders don't see it as a social media. 
platform. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of debate, and they were very defensive when mm -hmm. the high schoolers were trying to say, look, much like Xbox and all of these other type of platforms, you, you still need to be very careful and mindful of who you're playing with and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. it seems to be going well. Fantastic. And that's really, but that's also a credit to, I really, we all have to thank the elementary principals, assistant principals, the library media specialists mm -hmm. at the elementary schools mm -hmm. in, who work with the classroom teachers in the fifth grade classes. Ms. Hanratz, who helped facilitate the whole program, Mr. Piotrowski and his team, who helped on the back end with the tech support aspect of it, mm -hmm. and obviously the high schoolers themselves who uh, enjoy nice doing this. They had to learn a whole new medium this year. Mm -hmm. And they're working on their uh, parent presentation mm -hmm. yeah. workshop for later in the year. That's awesome. That's great. Thank you, Dr. Sun. Thank you. Gary, do you have something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No? You good? Yeah. Allison? Um, well, I mean, as a parent, I had the opportunity to see um, a couple of basketball games. So mm -hmm. my daughter um, was the team manager for varsity, which was so nice. And um, my son is playing basketball. So just as a parent, I got to go. Um, but I did also want to mention it on the board because um, it was really nice to see. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it is hard for families to understand, like, how can students play basketball, but then they can't, you know, play a musical instrument, you know? Mm -hmm. And we agree. We're just, um, you know, like you said, have to follow these guidelines. So with what we can do, I think mm -hmm. Dr. Peebles is doing a great job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the gym was set up where you could sit socially distanced. They had markers on the, um, on the um, benches, so, you know, to let people know users where to sit. And um, I, a temperature mm -hmm. stand really came in. I thought it all went smoothly. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the parents, you know, were just so excited to be there. Absolutely. Um, and we are really fortunate that we can have two spectators per player, but I know it's just not enough when you're a family of five mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and you all want to see your player, but um, I'm just so thankful that we could even, you know, rotate and get, and get our family in there. So thank you so much to everyone that made that happen. And of course, thank you to all the teachers and administrators because you are the ones making the magic happen. It's easy to say things that we want to see done as a board, mm -hmm. but to actually implement them is, um, a struggle, so thank you so much for all of your hard work. I could just add, uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, let's take about that. Uh, I just would just like to acknowledge, too, I was involved. I, I'm, I'm fortunate and grateful to have a daughter on the RC uh, sports team, and what really was, was special was to be able to honor and acknowledge our senior athletes um, at all these events, which is fantastic. We, we weren't able to have playoffs this year, but we're hopeful uh, with, with the fall teams that many of our teams will be involved with playoffs, and we're going to be able to honor and acknowledge our senior athletes mm -hmm. um, who are out there, uh, you know, despite the pandemic, uh, uh, exhi uh, exhibiting great sportsmanship as a, as a Mass Pick and Cheese. So thank you for the opportunity. Again, I want to acknowledge and thank the coaches as well as our athletic director who have been working overtime uh, just do a tremendous job to get our athletes on, on, the, uh, on the field. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And yeah, and as you say, every 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 little thing that goes back, it's it takes so many people. So even just something like you think, simply a presentation to the, you know, the elementary, it requires so many people to to kind of bring that off. So we do thank everyone um, for all their hard work, um, and bringing some some of these things to our children because they really do need it. Okay, with that, um, updates from the Board of Ed. Uh, the Board of Education allows time at the conclusion of its regular meetings for comments from residents in attendance. Please note that any person wishing to speak during this time shall comply with all provisions of board policy. Although a total of 30 minutes is allowed for comments, the board president has discretion to adjust the total time. We remind you to keep your comments to three minutes and to conduct yourself in a respectful manner. Please address school matters only and refrain from addressing topics related to personnel matters or individual students. Such concerns should be discussed privately with the superintendent or administrator at an appropriate time. The board is here to listen and cannot provide immediate feedback or engage in open dialogue. Any necessary follow-up will be noted and provided at a later date. Um, with that, is there anyone in the audience who has any questions or comments? No? Okay, going once, going twice, going three times. Okay. Well, with that, I will uh, ask for a motion to go back into executive session, please. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you, and good night, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.